Hello, and welcome to the Merle and Locke podcast. I'm Merle. And I'm Locke. Set sail and low expectations for everything nerd. Accompanied by a healthy, obvious, shapeful, hope, and pointless page of lack of focus, and questionably acquired knowledge. And more. And more. All right, so today, Locke, you had a topic for us that you wanted to discuss. Uh, why don't you introduce it to us? Yes, I did. So this was all kind of brought on because I happened upon watching the uh the blizzcon and the uh new things that are to come for the world of warcraft of warcraft <laughs> oh boy and, okay and, and because the trailer was bringing back anduin just kind of made me think about how far we have come and just the character development between anduin and even his father before him, Varian. I just kind of wanted to talk about it. Just kind of go over the lore and how we feel about their general progression. Okay, yeah. So so this, this topic, like, a, a lot of people, like... Uh, I would completely understand if people skip this episode because <laughs> if they don't have any idea about World of Warcraft, because we're just gonna nerd out a bit and, yeah. and talk about some 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 cool lore about uh, about the the Rin family dynasty uh, or uh, what the limited that we amount that we know about it, I right. suppose. Right. Um, right. So. Obviously, I guess it would be, you know, best to start out with Lane, yeah, Lane Rin, which unfortunately I don't know much about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's already good enough that you remembered his name because I could not, for the life of me, remember that. Uh, right. No. Uh. So, yeah, Varian's father, Lane. The most I know about him, right, is you know when when the orcs first came to Azeroth, and Lane was king, and I remember, what's her name, G Grona? Is it Grona? The, yeah, like, half, yeah. half yeah, orc yeah, yeah. lady. Yeah, she, she murdered him because, you know, she was, uh, I don't know, I think she was, like, being mind-controlled in, in some way by, uh, oh gosh, what was that? What was that? Warlock's name? Uh, Gul'dan. Gul'dan. Golly. Who do you remember that guy's name? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, this is... We're off to a bad start here. <laughs> this this goes all the way back to Warcraft. The the original game, Orcs and, Orcs and Humans. Yeah, which, which is something... Like, I, I've never played Warcraft. So we're gonna, we're gonna just, you know, gloss over that because we have no idea. And we'll, we'll just go ahead and start <laughs> off with Varian, yeah? <laughs> Let's yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, okay, so Varian has been with us the, you know, the biggest ch chunk of time, you know, he's been our king, you know, uh, as, as far as like allegiance is with the alliance, you know. So we know, oh gosh, I, I mean, I don't even know what, what, what we should talk about. Like, I know he was, in the like he was married and they had Anduin, and that was during the time when, uh, what was that? That black dragon that disguised herself to be in the uh, king's court, Anixia. That's the one. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and she was trying to manipulate King Varian, and I know there was something with the stone masons when they were rebuilding Stormwind after the catastrophe of you know the orc invasion and what have you they they rebuilt they hired the stone masons and then they they didn't pay the stone masons for one reason or another and then there's this you know because anixia like i i think the theory is that anixia she manipulated some of the uh alliance nobles into not paying the stone masons and giving them more the mindset of you know what you're you're serving your kingdom you you should do this all this work for free kind of thing and you know the stone basins they they all rebelled and you know started rioting in the streets and i, I guess somebody ended up throwing a, a rock and it killed varian's wife uh which is kind of awful which i mean right. like what a scrub right <laughs> down to a rock jeez jeez what a real stoner 
Oh god, I'll tell you. What do we like with the, with all the, like these crazy, you know, like valiant heroic deaths that all these people experience in the War- Warcraft story, and Varian's wife dies to a rock. How embarrassing, oh, gosh. you know. But anyway, you <laughs> <laughs> uh, should feel um, ashamed. Yeah, right. But then, like, obviously, Varied was, you know, he's just torn up about it or whatever. And then Anixia started to, like, dig her claws deeper and trying to manipulate the king. But she was having issues with it because of, because of Anduin. Like, Anduin had this, you know, he, he had always been, you know, surrounded by the light or what have you. So it was like this, he had like this cleansing pre- presence about him where whenever Varian was with him, like it, it, the fog seemed to clear, you know? Right. And, and I mean, Anixia, like she obviously knew, like she couldn't, she couldn't get full control of Varian. So she ended up, what'd she do? She like kidnapped him and split Varian's personalities into two or something like that and like made, a copy of him, right? Where like his will was in one body, and then the uh, I don't know, like more naive kind heartedness was in another, or something like that. And she she got rid of the one with the will, and or really she tried to. Uh, I guess that he was kidnapped by the, or he fought off the Naga or some, for some reason <laughs> the Naga were there. And, uh, uh, I don't know if it was an offering or what it was, but he ended up washing onto the shores of, uh, somewhere in Kalimdor. I'm pretty sure where he was, he was picked up or found on the beach and he was picked up and made a slave and forced to fight and, uh, as a gladiator for what was that orc's name ragar rag is it ragar i think it's ragar ragar that sounds familiar i think it was ragar but anyways and get yelled at if people know yeah i know oh gosh this is awful i should have prepared for this more (laughs) um uh good lord you you did have time (laughs) i I did i had a whole week to prepare for this uh i'm I'm doing my best here okay sorry sorry (laughs) so after he was picked up as glider that's where he met valera and and brawl and they were fought as a team as gladiators and you know, oh gosh, I don't, I don't even know if I should go into all of this because this is like, there's a lot of backstory, uh, for Varian. But like, he fought, fought as a gladiator. They won Rhaegar a bunch of money and then, and then they ended up escaping and they, you know, they, they went through all these things. Like Varian was slowly, he had amnesia. That's, that's the whole reason why, you know, he, like nobody can make sense of him and he can make sense of himself. It's because he, he, that, that copy of Varian had amnesia and, and, you know, slowly over time he was starting to remember, you know, through different, you know, avenues that, that he would explore to remember, like whether it be like seeing the insignia of, of the alliance or, uh, there's like this cleansing ritual that they did at some point and he was able to, he was able to remember Anduin. And that's where he's like, oh, I need to find my son or, or what have you. And, and they ended up like escaping and, and they found Jaina Proudmore and she helped him to remember who he was. And she's like, oh, you're King v- Varian Rin. You know, we need to return you to Stormwind, but you need to, you need to be careful because your son is still there and, you know, he could be in danger. And he eventually got to Stormwind and, oh gosh, how did this all go down? Like, Anixia, they, they found out Anixia was a black dragon eventually and, and Varian's two halves teamed up against her using, uh, what was his sword? Chalamane. So yeah, That's Chal- the one. Chalamane, yeah. So, you know, you know how Chalamane splits apart in two? Right, right. Well, both, both of his halves got one half 
of Charlemagne. And then, you know, Nixia tried to kill off the Varian with, with the Will, who we, we know as Logosh at that point, because he was given that nickname after his uh, showing his ferocity in battle during gladiatorial combat. Uh, the orcs gave him that that name, which means uh, white white wolf or something like that. So so Logosh and Derpy Ver, uh, Varian, they <laughs> uh, they teamed up against Anixia, and, and uh, when Anixia when Anixia tried to kill off Logosh, uh, the other Varian stepped in the way, and I guess he I think he died or whatever, and then. Logosh picked up the other half of Charlemagne and, and they became, he became one again. Mm-hmm. And he was able to kill off Anixia and then they, you know, cut off her dragon head and hung it, you know, over the, over some archway in, in Stormwind. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's where, you know, all the big stuff started where it's just like, holy crap, the amount of stuff that this guy had to go through. Right. And that's like, that's just like a little taste, you know, right. of, of what Varian had to go through. <laughs> uh, from there, you know, you see like this f- ferocity in Varian. But what, what I love is that like slowly we, we get to see him develop as a king. Right. Right. So he he has this terrible background with where his wife is killed. He's betrayed in his own court, uh, manipulated by this black dragon, torn apart and thrown to the wind, and and somehow he still figures out a way to to get back, get back home to his son, and like throughout throughout time, like all these experiences, like throughout like all the expansions. Um, I love whenever, you know, whenever he's trying to, uh, you know, make peace with the horde or whatever and have, have these conversations with these horde leaders and, and Anduin is always there bringing, you know, uh, sense to the conversation, right? Where he's, he's like the voice of reason, you know, and he's just a child. Right. right. So I, I love how he was able to temp, like, kind of temper his father into like a certain way of thinking, where like he had such influence over his over his father and and the way that uh, his father ruled. He was he was so so volatile for the longest time until he started opting more for peace and understanding and and looking towards the future more than you know simply reacting to each each conflict whatever it may be there was also a, a big changes with with Jaina right I, I know she's not the topic of conversation but I, I just thought it was hilarious like how you know Jaina was always ragging on him man like she was always like like busting his balls like even though like Varian was like out of place sometimes because he's like acted out of anger a lot you know at least initially towards towards the horde and Jane was all like stop don't be so mean I'm not gonna help you if you're being mean it's kind of funny for her character right because she was like that for the longest time yeah she was like that for so long until like She's just the flip of a switch. She was like, I hate the horde. <laughs> yeah. Uh, trying to remember what expansion she she really kind of just changed personalities where she just kind of turned around and was just like, don't trust them. They, they're they horde. That's, it's when she became the leader of the um, Kirin Tor, which was... Oh, which expansion was that? Yeah, we're talking about the Kirin Tor. I feel like that came... Pandaria. Pandaria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Pandaria. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We we still would have been dealing with Garrosh at that point, so... Yeah, Garrosh was, was always an issue. That, that, <laughs> guy, was, that guy was an asshole. Uh, he, he, but... <laughs> he was a, t- a t- ticking time bomb. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was uh, it was during when she became leader of the Kirin Tor, and there was like this artifact piece or something, like a big bell, or something like that. Which it was on. What's that floating island called? Dalaran. Dalaran, that's the one. <laughs> uh, so so they were keeping it on Dalaran, and 
you know, the horde, like, I guess from within the Kirin tour, they, they helped the, the orcs get that artifact. And that's where Jaina was like, bah, I don't trust any of them. They're not allowed on Dalaran no more. Screw them. You know? And, uh, and then she just completely hated them. And, and like they kind of switched places, right? Varian and, and Jaina switched places where Varian was just like, you know, chill out. You know, <laughs> just, just chill. Let's talk this out. You know, let's figure things out. And she was like, no, I hate them all. <laughs> Never trust them again. And it, it was when, oh yeah, Varian was trying to bring the, the blood elves into the alliance fold, right? That, that's, yeah, he was trying to bring them into the, uh, over to the Alliance because I guess they were on the fence kind of about the Horde and the Alliance. And then, and then Jaina ended up, or uh, Jaina and I guess the rest of the Kirin Tor, they ended up killing a bunch of blood elves and imprisoning them on Dalaran. And Ed Varian was like, you just screwed everything up. What is wrong with you? Right. <laughs> they're just like, they're a bunch of jerks, you know? <laughs> so, uh, we just killed them all off. So, yeah, so the Blood Elves didn't, I guess they weren't too happy about that. Yeah. So, and then that brings us to, oh gosh, what does that bring us to? Warlords of Draenor? Uh, which Warlords of Draenor, I, I don't know what was, a lot of like time, time fuckery happened. <laughs> right. I, I don't, I don't quite remember Varian Rin having much of a, uh, a part to play during Warlords. Well, I mean, yeah, he didn't show up much. It was more like a, um, like it was like just at the beginning, wasn't it? Where one of the, uh, uh, what are the purple, purple tentacle monster man? Purple tentacle monsters. Uh, are we the equivalent of mind mind flares? <laughs> <laughs> yes, pretty much mind yeah. flares. <laughs> what is that race called? Uh, geez, what what were they called? The the mindless ones or something like that. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the the playable race. The the Oh, Jesus. See, I'm thinking of something else. There's a mindless one, which wasn't a race you could play as, but you're talking about the Draenei. Draenei, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so at the beginning of that, Varian was approached by the Draenei or something like that, and Draenei was like, it was like, just sign this, this order to go to war or whatever and let us handle it kind of thing. And Varian was like, okay, I guess. And he's you know, stamps or whatever that cinematic was. And then the Dreadnought pretty much, you know, I feel like they pretty much led the way, you know, against this, into this conflict. Right. I mean, it was affecting their people more than anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then we got on to Legion. Yeah. Oh, golly. Right. Oh, Legion. Okay. So, uh, Legion is where we see, like, uh, everything just... Uh, it's the changeover, you know, of new age. Yeah. You know, have to move on. The whole starting to Legion is you, especially if you're flying for the Alliance, you, you get to ride the, uh, God, what is it, that, that flying ship? I can't remember the name of it at the moment. But you're riding with him in the battle. You have Sylvanas on their ship flying in to help us <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that that one got complicated right because okay so they were fighting the horde and the alliance were fighting on two fronts you know against the the um the burning legion and so the horde were maintaining the high ground and they were they had archers up on the ridge that were like shooting i uh, got all the threats that were in the sky and you know, the Alliance were making this big push and Varian was leading the way. And he's like, we're, we got him, we got him on the ropes. Let's, let's go in. And meanwhile, like, and, and, and Varian was like, tell, like he said to, I think it was getting Garrett Greymane where he's like, tell what's her face up there to, you know, take down the, the threat in the sky or whatever. Tell her to get, to get her archers to uh, go to work. And when they look up on the ridge, 
or they hear a horn and they look up at the ridge and all the archers, you know, back up from the ridge and they start retreating and the and Varian and and Gan are both like, "What the hell are they doing? Like, why are they <laughs> leaving us?" <laughs> uh, but what was actually happening up there was that I guess uh, Vol'jin Vol'jin got killed, and his dying words to Banshee Lady Sylvanas <laughs> Sylvanas that's the one. Yeah, uh, yeah. his di- dying words was like, "Don't let don't let the the horde die this day or whatever." And she was like, "Oh God, okay, fine." And she's like, "Gosh, we get, she's like, we gotta get out of here, guys. And we're getting overwhelmed." And and that's why they made the retreat. And like, uh, it's kind of upsetting because, like, you know, I I mean, like, I I get the retreat. You, your war chief just went down, and you know, you're trying to help help your help the horde survive because so they don't get obliterated up here, you know, fighting the burning legion. But yeah, that, that, that further solidified, you know, the hate for the horde, uh, in the Alliance, you know, because all, all we saw playing for the Alliance was the fact that they retreated right. you know, out of nowhere. Right. And, and I was like, wow, that's messed up. And then, Variants like, well, we gotta cover losses. We need to get out of here because we don't have backup up on the on the ridge. So they all the lions try to make their escape, you know, and then they get onto the airship and they start flying off. And then this giant fell monster thing comes out of nowhere and grabs onto the ship and you know about to tear it down along with the the rest of the alliance soldiers that were on board and and variants hanging from a rope ladder and he's like, not on my watch and he. He has a little letter to get Grayman. And he's like, he's like, give this to my boy. And Gen's like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> and uh, a variant leaps off and and kills this giant fell monster. And then he starts battling a bunch of other demons from the Burning Legion on the shores. And obviously, he he uh, he doesn't make it. And it was pretty devastating. He gets to the the <laughs> gate. He he gets to the front of uh that that temple or uh, dark tower or whatever. Then they they summon legions upon legions to just go after him, which he he, he goes out just fighting. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got a few spears in his back, and then Goldan walks up like, "Ho oh, ho ho! You're so weak!" <laughs> or whatever. He's like. He's like, you're going to die as the king that risked his life for nothing. And Varian is all stoic and stuff. And he looks up and he goes, for the alliance. Yeah, right, and, right. Then, and then Goldan shoves a little fell energy ball into his chest. And it's like, holy shit. And Varian goes all like, blah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he gives you that, that, that proud moment uh to to be in the alliance because he he went out with a fight yeah yeah he, he wasn't letting anything stop him regardless and he was just like my king uh, yeah oh man it was it's devastating we were like how how Jaina was in uh wrath of the lich king where she's just like i'm just proud of my king <laughs> i'm so proud of my king oh yeah when uh when he lit sour fang right. grab his boy yep yep yeah yeah <laughs> Oh man, no! It's it's a devastating thing, and I, and I love Varian. I love his whole story. I know my summary of most of it is, you know, a little bit off, admittedly, but uh, <laughs> but you know, I uh, r- roughly, I think I hit I hit it, you know, ballpark. I nailed it. No, let's just face it. I nailed it. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, then then we move on to like to Anduin becoming the uh, the king of Stormwind, and obviously he's got you know Auntie Jaina on his left, and he's got Gen Greymane on his right, Tyrallian, yeah, uh, Taronda, and he's got all the support, you know, and 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 later Bolvar, <laughs> right, right, Bolvar as well, right, eventually. 
Yeah, so uh, why, why don't you give us a little rundown of of Anduin, I mean, so far, like leading up into this cinematic, where it's, I'm sure most people who are fans of World of Warcraft have, have had to have seen, you know, this amazing cinematic that they released at BlizzCon. But yeah, lead, lead us up to that point. Uh, so for most of the people who have played World of Warcraft, at least from the very beginning would only know Anduin as this young child who stood in the throne room near the king's chair for the longest time, just little Anduin standing there, waiting for his father who had been, well, he disappeared, let's put it that way. The very start of World of Warcraft, we did not know where Varian Rin was. The only person who was in the thro throne room was uh, Bolvar. So it was just like, who's this guy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and even while everything's going on, you know, th this kid gets to witness all the things that are happening inside the throw room, all the conversations that are happening. No idea where his father is, but he's just this innocent little kid. We don't see Varian again until the Lich King expansion when he finally comes back. Still little Anduin running around, he's standing beside his dad, which is just like, oh, how cute. Like, they're, they're finally together after about two expansions have passed by at that point, which I, I don't even know what it would be in in in-game years, you know what I mean? So, we, we already talked about what Alvarian did during during Lich King. You know, he, he goes up to, to help go up against Arthas, which was his childhood friend, by the way. Yep, yep. They were very close. Especially after Lane was taken out, and I guess Varian was raised with Arthas uh, while they, like during the rebuilding of Stormwind or something, he stayed in their kingdom. So, we we don't see Anduin grow up. Like, he, he just remains this chi child until... I'm pretty sure he's still a child in Cataclysm. I could be wrong about that. I I I think Anduin's still a child by the time Deathwing breaks his chains, comes out from the depths of Azeroth. Which, once again, like I said, I I don't remember what Alvarian did during that. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I, Maybe <laughs> I don't remember seeing much of him uh, when I when I think back on it. I remember seeing more of. Uh, I guess that's when he was doing the whole gladiator thing, yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, because because we dealt more with thrall and dealing with the aspects than we than we dealt with. Because I'm pretty sure he was like, "This is kind of out of my league." <laughs> <laughs> we're we're talking about a giant dragon, which he can only do so much. He is a human warrior, after all. Right. Yeah. I think I think the most difficult thing when it comes to like the Warcraft lore and what have you is, you know, all the there's all this supplemental like lore and stuff all scattered about, and I what I need to put together is like a timeline. <laughs> Because I could never line up ever anything. Like I, I, I only put things like this lore. It seems like it would fit during this time frame. Uh, not entirely certain if it is during that time frame or not. But the only part I remember him having much of uh, in Cataclysm was getting Gen Greymane joined into the alliance as well as the rest of the Gelnaeus uh, race. Right. And that that would that that was pretty hairy, wasn't it? Because initially, <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so uh, initially, uh, I I guess they had you know ill feelings towards you know the Gilnaeans and for the sole fact of like you know them building up their walls and not letting anybody through and you know being kind of selfish, I suppose. Um, and it wasn't until was it like when the Forsake like forsaken attack them or something like that tore down their walls and right yeah in the city and and then they were like hey uh, <laughs> you know can we be cool it's a, it's <laughs> a funny story we thought we could do this on our own but uh 
Yeah. yeah. It turns out that the <laughs> the scourge and the uh, the undead are pretty ruthless. <laughs> Yeah, they're uh, there's some scary dudes, bud. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think that was about the only part the Varian had in Cataclysm. And like I said, Anduin still being a child. Then we reach Mr. Pandaria, where Anduin is grown up. Just all of a sudden, bam, he's bigger. Bam. <laughs> he's a big boy now. He, he, yeah. He's a big teenage boy, and he's running around and trying to be friends with everybody. <laughs> try trying to understand the lore of this newfound uh island of Pandaria. Yeah, and it, it was going well and he was like, well, I mean, initially it wasn't cuz, you know, they were like they crashed into Pandaria and you know, Varid was like, "Where's my boy?" And he, my boy. They had to go find him. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, uh Andrew was all like like I don't, I don't want to go back to Stormwind, Dad. I wanna, I wanna hang out here in Pandaria with the teddy bears. Right, right. <laughs> and and then he ends up getting like, he ends up getting fucked up by uh, Garrosh, and like all of his bones are broken or something like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. Then you know, both Auntie Jaina and Varian were both like. We are going to destroy these mofos. Right. <laughs> yeah, so more hate for the Horde. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, things things clear up by the end of that expansion where, you know, when Vol'jin takes over. Right. Because, you know, Vol'jin, the Horde helped fight against Garrosh. Uh, well, once they got rid of their tyrannical leader, Garrosh, everything was a little better. But... Yeah, Anduin's main part in Pandaria was trying to learn about the locals, see how the land works, and actually working with them, which is more than a lot of the other alliance could have done. Like, if it wasn't for Anduin, they wouldn't have learned as much as they did. They were they were just like, stop the horde. <laughs> That's it. Right, right. Yeah. Little did they realize that all their, their fighting and hatred was actually causing problems. And Garrus, Garrus just wanted to see the world burn. Yep, guys, that guy's just a problem. Now, we'll, now we're we'll gonna get into Warlords of Draenor. I don't remember how much Anduin has a part to play in that one either, because we no, I don't remember him really. We, we jump around to doing more of what the Draenei need, uh, setting up our own little uh, own garrison. The, our, yeah. our garrison. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people did not care about that, but... Uh, <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> we were, like, thrown back in time, so it was more of a Cadgar expansion than anything. So, I'm going to skip right on past Warlords, and we'll get into Legion and kind of how that then affected Anduin, right? To know then that... Because we have to now go back and tell Anduin... Here's your note. <laughs> Here's a note from your daddy. Yeah, your daddy's <laughs> no longer here. But he fought valiantly, so this this kid's now traumatized. But now he knows that he's going to have to kind of stand up and be the new leader, which a, a little after all this happens... Uh, everybody's already like, Anduin doesn't know what he's doing, like, we, we should have somebody else as the king. No, nobody like Anduin, and I kind of felt bad for him. But he was kind of a whiny baby there for a while. <laughs> 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 so, I, you know, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So, ba Battle for Azeroth, they, they were definitely like, Anduin doesn't know what he's doing. But he, he did his best to, uh end up bringing more people into into the ranks of the alliance as as did the horde you know the horde found a lot of new allies as well so it, it was just a big fight i i battle for azeroth was an interesting expansion i guess you could say yeah i mean i i enjoyed you know a lot of a lot of bits from it but a lot of it was just like, what What exactly are we doing? Um. Yeah, <laughs> there, there was a lot of that. Or it was 
Like, what are we doing here? And, and I, <laughs> I love how the artwork for Battle for Azeroth is essentially just a redone artwork of the original Orcs versus Humans. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From Yeah. Nope. I, I, I noticed so, that as well. So, yeah, just I feel like to give them another reason to get the Alliance and the Horde to get one more go at it. The BFA was less about Anduin, more about Jaina and the Cult Tyrus. That's that's about it. I I have nothing to say about Anduin's character and how that developed in BFA, minus uh, his little fight against Sylvanas right right outside of the old ruins of Lordaeron. Right. So, like, what what I'm getting from this right is. You know, as far as as Varian goes, like he had this epic story. You know, he he was a, an incredible character, and then after he had passed, we've been waiting for Anduin to have his go. Right? We get like little teeny bits here and there for Anduin, but in the grand scheme of things, most of us by this point are still. Remembering Anduin as just being that little boy that's running around in Stormwind Keep. Yep. A, a lot of us are just like, he's just a kid. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, we don't even take him all that seriously. We're like, man, I just wish wish Varian was still here. Most of us are still sour. Yeah, we were a little sour. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't. I honestly wasn't believing that Varian was actually dead. I said, I think that was all a lie. <laughs> it was. It was a hoax concocted by the higher ups. There was that theory, right, that that Varian had actually died multiple times, but he kept getting brought back, you know, to serve his people. Right. Uh, I don't know where that where that comes from. Whether it was like a comic book or something. Right. I I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just making things up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there was something there though. <laughs> something about that. And and everybody was like they're like, Well, I wonder if he's gonna get brought back again, kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Uh, I I thought we were going to see Varian in Shadowlands because after all, since they said he was dead, uh. I was just like, Oh my god, are we gonna see Varian? Like because they were talking about all these souls that instead of being taken to their the respected uh, area, they were pulled away and thrown into the mall, which is essentially just thrown into hell. So I was hoping we'd see him. Now we did see glimpses. And there was a certain part in the expansion where you've seen these little orbs sitting around and you had to find a certain a certain wisp. And all of them were named suspiciously like characters that we've known all throughout Warcraft and the world of Warcraft. Uh, oh, I don't remember that. Oh, it, we'll have to go over that some other time. But, uh, okay. yeah, <laughs> uh, Shadowlands, we've definitely seen a lot of Anduin again. Um, yeah, and yeah, he had a big part to play. Oh, big part. I mean, between him being the light and the shadows, he was really saving our hides a good bit, and then all of a sudden he was taken away from us and used as a, a tool of destruction. And he ended up doing a lot of bad stuff at, when he was under the influence of this jailer. And by the end of the expansion, you, you see that... Uh, once once we get him to come to his senses, we defeat the jailer. Anduin's now feeling the sense of regret that Oh, but but when he comes to his senses, as you say, that is when we see Varian. <laughs> that is when we see Varian, yeah. My son. Which yeah, it was just kind of a tearjerker a little bit when yeah. you think about it. It was almost like a Mufasa Simba moment, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which, when when you heard my son, it took me to when Arthas Menethil's father came to visit him after he had been defeated. Oh, right. Anyway, Anduin comes to his senses, but he, he realizes that he had 
taken a back seat to this influence and was able to witness all the bad things he had done. So he leaves and disappears for a long time, which all throughout Dragonflight, we see nothing with Anduin. He is, he's gone. He is trying to pull himself together. Right. I think the theory is it's been five years from when when he left in the Shadowlands to the cinematic that Blizzard released. I think I think the time frame was five years that he's that he's been wandering. Right. So Dragonflight, he is non-existent. It's more dealing with the the dragon aspects and learning more about the Drakthir and. All these other things that are going on in the Dragon Isles. I'm not releasing any ex- spoilers for that if nobody's finished that expansion. I still haven't. Uh, yep, nope, neither have I. And <laughs> just because we're talking about this, I'm probably going to have to save up some money and get back into it. But, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th- I feel I definitely won't be getting back into it until the expansion, The War Within, which we've seen the trailer... And it is Thrall coming to talk to Anduin, like, found him. And it looks like he uh, is dressed like he's in Old Doom. Yeah, because you, you see uh, Sargeras' sword. Right, well, Silithus, which is just nearby Old Doom, like, you can see the sword from Old Doom just over the mountain. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. But, like, what he was wearing kind of made me think that he was hiding in the deserts of Old Doom. Okay. Now, I could be wrong, but... What, I mean, I guess we'll find out. Right, right. Yeah. What better... I think, what what better place to hide and kind of try to clear your mind than a, a desert wasteland? <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. I mean, not not to say that Silithus isn't pretty desolate, but that there's a giant sword st- sticking in the middle of the ground. But uh, he, we see Thrall talking to him, being like, "Come on, you, you need to come back. Like, there's something else going on." Yeah, there's there's a a voice, there's a voice that keeps talking to multiple people, Anduin and Thrall included, and yeah, Thrall is confronting Anduin and being like, like, I know you're trying to work some stuff out, but we need to band back together and, and figure out what's, what's happening and what, and what, like whether or not, I don't, I don't know if the theory is that Azeroth itself is trying to speak to them or. That, that is a good question. Is it Azeroth? I, I, yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, just seeing Anduin and, seeing that he's still dealing with this uh, turmoil or the war within himself. (laughs) Right, right, yeah. I can't wait to see, hopefully, a good turnaround for his character uh, where where he finally kind of stops being a, a wussy and running away from everything and facing up to uh, what needs to be done. Like, the world still needs saving. Yeah, take taking a note out of his father's book and confronting the problem. Right. I feel, like, after seeing that cinematic, I feel like, you know, he's definitely going to make that step. Step up to the, uh, to the challenge and fill his father's shoes. I also want to give credit to how well... The trailer was done, like the the graphics oh that they have for it. It was amazing. That's pretty good. Uh, that that's what kind of I know that the graphics in game are nothing like the trailer, but yeah, <laughs> I'm like that's oh, still pretty pretty well done. It's like watching a movie. Oh man, the emotion in Anduin's face, like it it, it pulled at my heartstrings. I was like, oh my god, the emotion in hearing <laughs> hearing Thrall's voice because well. We know who Thrall's voice, voiced by, right? No. No? No. Who's he voiced by? Uh, isn't it voiced by uh, the Mr. Executive Producer himself? Oh. It is Chris Metzen. Yeah. Oh. I had no idea. He was 
I had no idea. Uh, Metzen I was like, was the voice so, of Thrall. so knowing that what? that Metzen's back, and the fact that Thrall is now more of a a character again, because you notice that Thrall kind of took a back seat after Metzen left. So now that Metzen's back, it's like Thrall's like, it's okay. Or Metzen's like, it's okay, come back. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> we need your help. This is just more of uh, just Metzen talking to all of us. We are Anduin. We are the people who have, who have kind of been shaken by the things that have happened. <laughs> and Metzen's going, it's okay. I'm back, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm back. We're back. <laughs> oh man, it's it's comforting, you know. And I'm, uh, oh god, you you seriously like it's, never it's took notice me. to that. I I well no no, no. I uh, I I knew that that theory because I I read it after uh, seeing some comments on the cinematic and and somebody came up with that. And I thought it was hilarious, but I had no, like, I thought he was contacting us through the writing. I didn't no. know that they actually meant, like, <laughs> he was the voice that they're all himself. Absolutely. I was like, no, no, that's, that's, it, it makes it even funnier now, because right. I had no idea he was the voice of Thrall. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. All right, how do we end this? Okay, so... Here's how we're going to go out with it. What kind of character development do you want to see from Anduin by the end of this next expansion? Oh, man. No, I'm like, I'm ready for Anduin to become the absolute badass that we've been waiting for. <laughs> like, I'm absolutely ready for it. All right. Because, like, I don't know, like, after all this build up and, and stuff, and like, personally, I never took Anduin that seriously cuz I didn't I didn't find him that interesting of a character. Like I I'm ready for him to just I don't know, like rise to the challenge. Uh and I I expect big things from him and his character. How about you? I uh I think the whole war within expansion name is kind of a euphemism for also what Anduin's going to be going through. Right. Okay. Like, I, I still think that he's going to deal again with the war within. I don't think that it's necessarily like what they say where they're like, we're, we're going to be going into the center of Azeroth or going into the depths. Like, I think that does kind of have a part to play, but I think the war within maybe might be a double entendre, meaning we will be dealing with some internal war with our ourselves or Anduin will be dealing with a war with himself so it might not be fully resolved by the end of the expansion but at least we'll see some progression on his character I I feel yeah I, I mean I'm totally cool with seeing this story driven by Anduin's character development like I'm totally up for that Apps like one hundred percent up for that, because I want to. I want to see it. I want to see it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm ready for it. Uh, me too. <sighs> so, um, I guess let's go uh, renew our subscriptions and play some World of Warcraft. Eh? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the Marlin Lock Podcast. If you enjoyed this banter, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash Merle and Locke, or simply follow the link in the description. Thank you.